Your role is absolutely vital in ensuring that a fair trial takes place. It's always been important. But again, with the increasing diversity of witnesses and accused persons who are in our court, uh, your role has become one which is critical. Uh, I'm very grateful for the professionalism and expertise which you bring to the proceedings and for the advice and guidance which prosecutors and defence counsel receive uh, during the course and before proceedings. That role is one which is increasingly going to be uh, in demand. Uh, we live in a, a global context where we have evidence which comes from abroad in many of our cases uh, and the role of the interpreter will be central to ensuring that fair trials take place in Scottish courts. As interpreters working within Scotland's criminal justice system, you have a vital role in ensuring that our justice system upholds the rights of individuals and that Scotland's criminal justice system is accessible, effective and serves all communities fairly. Interpreter needs to have a variety of skills. Uh, broadly speaking, they can be grouped into four major or broad categories. They are like uh, linguistic skills, uh, interpersonal or communication skills, contextual knowledge, and professional skills. The quality of interpreting in any setting is important, but in co court or justice system, it is paramount. It's important that interpreters have a written and spoken command of both English and the preferred language, are familiar with religious or gender considerations and understand police and court procedures. Interpreters accepting assignments from the police, Scottish Court Service, Defence Agents or the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service, known as COPFS, must adhere to the very highest standards. Under the influence of alcohol, so they were very aggressive. To provide accurate interpretation which conveys the exact meaning of what's been said. I'm sorry, what do you mean by assault? without adding, omitting or changing anything. Mr. Watt, do anything to the victim. Making explanation only where a cultural misunderstanding may be occurring. Sorry, when I find any man. Could I ask the gentleman, I'm not very sure what he's saying. Or where there is no direct equivalent for a particular term's intended meaning. Any modifications, was it souped up at all? Um, sorry. Could you, could you please explain to me what suit that means? Declare any difficulties, whether dialect, cultural or religious, as soon as they become apparent. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I don't understand this dialect. You'll need to get another interpreter. To act in an impartial and professional manner and to respect confidentiality at all times. In return, people who provide interpretation services can expect to be treated as well-respected professional colleagues by all in Scotland's criminal justice system. This DVD contains a host of information to help you provide the best possible service, including the role of the interpreter in helping our justice system function efficiently, who's who in a courtroom, and how to overcome difficulties. Scotland's criminal justice system has a long and proud history, but to those unfamiliar with it, the processes and procedures which dominate it may at first appear complex and confusing. Although each case is unique, most criminal cases will follow the same procedures, all of which may require the services of an interpreter. You may be asked to provide interpretation services at various stages. Witness statements. Witnesses need to tell a police officer what they saw or heard about a particular incident. The police will take a note of this information in the form of a witness statement. Precognition. This is an interview with a witness to find out what evidence they will give in court, as often the witness's recollections may change from the information they originally told the police, and it's preferable to have this information before going to court. Arrest. If suspected of a crime, a person is detained by police officers and may be taken to a police station. Precognition. 
the defense agent may wish to interview the accused before going to court. Court. Not all courtrooms look exactly the same, but let's take you on a tour to find out who will normally be in the courtroom during a criminal court case, who they are and what they do. First, the judge or sheriff. They are known as the master of the law. In summary proceedings in the district or sheriff court, they will decide upon questions of both fact and law. In the high court, I am the judge. In the sheriff court, I'm called a sheriff. I usually sit here on the bench. I'm an expert on the law and ensure that each case is judged in a fair, balanced and impartial way. If there is no jury, I will listen carefully to all the evidence and then decide upon the verdict. If the accused is found guilty, I will decide what sentence is the most appropriate to impose. The accused may also be in the courtroom. The prosecutor normally sits in the left-hand side of the table in front of the bench. They represent the Crown. Their job is to prove the case against the accused. I am the Procurator Fiscal. In High Court cases, I am an Advocate Deputy from the Crown Office. We are the lawyers for the prosecution. After the police have investigated a possible crime, I decide whether there is sufficient evidence to take the case to court and whether it would be in the public interest. In court, I will ask witnesses questions so that they can give their evidence. The prosecution has the burden of proof, which means that I need to present enough evidence before the court can decide that the accused is guilty of the crime. The defence team sits opposite the prosecution. They represent the accused. I am the defence lawyer. Like the Procurator Fiscal, I will ask the witnesses some questions too. I represent the accused and it's my job to test the evidence presented by the prosecution and witnesses. As the defence, I do not need to prove anything. It is the prosecution who has to prove, beyond reasonable doubt, that the accused is guilty. In solemn proceedings in both the High Court and the Sheriff Court, the trial is conducted before a jury. They sit here in the jury box. I am a member of the jury. There are 15 of us and we sit in the jury box. We are just members of the public like you. Almost every adult in Scotland can be asked to be on a jury. We don't know anything about the case before it starts and we don't know anybody who is involved in the case. We listen carefully to all the evidence. Some of us may write down notes. Afterwards, we retire to the jury room to decide on our verdict. Not every court case has a jury. Sometimes the sheriff alone decides on the verdict. The clerk of the court sits close to the sheriff or judge. They call the cases, record the court proceedings and advise court users on court procedures. I am the clerk of court. I help make sure that everything in the court runs smoothly. I am responsible for assisting the judge or sheriff in procedural matters and keeping the court records. Most trials have to be recorded either in writing or on tape in case there is a problem later. It's my job to do this. The court officer also makes sure that the court runs smoothly and informs witnesses when it's their turn to give their evidence. I am the court officer. In some courts I'm called a mason. I help the court run smoothly. I will let witnesses know when it is their turn to give evidence and will escort witnesses to and from the witness box. If asked by the prosecution or defence lawyers, I may also show witnesses pieces of evidence, such as clothing or photographs, so that they can identify them. Most cases are open to the public. The public gallery is usually located at the back of the courtroom facing the judge or sheriff. This is the public gallery and I am a member of the public. Sometimes people can sit here to watch what happens in court. They must be over 14 and must stay quiet. You're not allowed to eat, drink, and you must make sure that your mobile phones are switched off. Sometimes the judge or sheriff may order that the court is closed to the public and the public will have to leave. This might happen when a child is giving evidence. Witnesses come to court as either crown witnesses, which means the prosecutor cites them, or defence witnesses, which means the accused or his or her lawyer cites them. The court needs witnesses to give evidence so that they can build up a picture of what happened. Most witnesses give their evidence from the witness box. I am a witness. 
I wait in the witness waiting room until it's my turn to give evidence. When the court officer tells me I go into court to give my evidence, usually I stand up when I'm giving my evidence because it makes it easier for the people in court to hear what I say. But there's usually a chair in the witness box and I can ask to sit down if standing up is too difficult for me. I might have arranged this beforehand. Some witnesses may be particularly vulnerable. There are a number of special measures available to help adult vulnerable witnesses to give their evidence to the court. One of the measures is a screen, which means the witness cannot see or be seen by the accused. Another special measure which may be available for vulnerable witnesses is giving your evidence using a TV link from another room out with the courtroom. If I am a vulnerable witness and feel unable to give my evidence in the courtroom, the court may be asked to consider allowing me to give evidence from another room using a live TV link. The questions are relayed to me from the courtroom and everyone back in the courtroom can see and hear my answers. In some courtrooms, police or security officers may also be present. It's our job to ensure public order and provide reassurance within the court and court buildings. If asked by the witness, it's important that you do not say whether the accused will be in the courtroom or where they will be seated. If you've been asked to provide interpreting services in a courtroom but have no previous experience of attending court, you should speak to the person who's instructed you or your interpreting agency. It may be possible to arrange a visit to the court so that you can familiarize yourself with the layout, lighting and acoustics of the room and the most appropriate place for you to stand or sit so that everyone in the courtroom can see and hear you. If you are a beginner, uh, it's advisory to uh, come to court one day before and, and uh, try to uh, uh, sink in the surroundings, try to uh, understand, be aware where uh, uh, the functions of people you will meet in the court, where they will be sitting, will be, uh, well, where they will be posi uh, positioned in the court, and finally, well, where you will be uh, positioned, well, what uh, your function is. So uh, it's, it's, it is uh, advisory to attend the court and, and try to uh, understand what your function is. Uh, if they have not been to court, it is very important that uh, they get all the, use all the opportunities which are available to improve their knowledge and skills, like uh, through their agencies, sometimes they have the visits or open days or whatever the chance they get, they should go and uh, learn, look and learn and uh, familiarize themselves with the system, yeah. Depending on the specific stage of the process, you will be instructed by different agencies. Police may require to interview a witness or suspected accused person at any time of the day or night and will require immediate interpreting assistance. They contact the agency who provide a 24-hour service. This will be done by telephone and information provided verbally. An interpreter will attend as soon as they are able. For any person who is arrested and then detained in custody, the police will book an interpreter on behalf of Scottish Court Service to assist the accused in court the following day. The police make the booking in this circumstance because of the short time scale between the case being received by the Procurator Fiscal and the accused appearing in court. This would normally be a telephone arrangement with no documentation provided. A brief explanation of the charge is provided verbally. However, effort should be made to provide as much information as possible to ensure that a suitable interpreter is provided. She had been out in Paisley County. Once a case has been raised and taken to court, the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service, COPFS, will book interpreters for all Crown witnesses for trial diets via the contracted agencies. Bookings will be made in each area by a nominated member of staff by phone. I was just wondering if we could please book an interpreter, please, that can speak in the language of Punjabi. It's for the case against David Johnston. Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service, COPFS, will also book an interpreter for precognition interview and when a victim requests an interview with victim information and advice. For High Court matters, the High Court staff will deal with the interpreter bookings for the case. Scottish Court Service, SCS, 
will book interpreters for accused persons throughout the life of the case and for every hearing at which the accused will be present. Defence agents each will have their procedures for engaging interpreters. As well as requesting language and dialect requirements, Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service, the police or the Scottish Court Service will provide details of specific needs for interpreting assignment. For example, requesting that the interpreter must have experience in high court criminal cases or advising that the case is particularly complex or of a sensitive nature. When assigned by Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service or Scottish Court Service, you will be sent a range of documents to help you prepare and to provide the best possible service. These might include a letter of instruction, copy of complaint or indictment, a code of conduct, general briefing notes, glossary of terms or monitoring form. You should make sure that you carefully read and understand all the information that you've been sent. If you think you're missing any information or you need to discuss the assignment further, perhaps you had previous involvement with this specific case or you think that there may be a conflict of interest or you become aware of a specific cultural, religious or gender consideration that may affect the behaviour of the witness or your ability to provide the best possible service, you must inform the person who has instructed you immediately. It's important for interpreters to read what they've been sent beforehand because there could always be a faint chance that the same interpreter has actually worked in the police station with the same case. And if that is the situation, then we have to get different people for the court. That's very important that uh, the interpreters are well prepared beforehand. They, are, they know what uh, they are required to and they should have the detailed information about their assignment like date, time, venue and also the information about the case as well which they are, in which they are uh, being uh, helping. So if they think uh, if anything is missing, uh, they should definitely get that beforehand. And on the other hand, it is uh, uh, a good uh, agency should also make this a point to pass on all the information to the, and they should have a good communication so that the interpreters can always contact their agencies and get all this information. Although the specific assignment venue may differ, it may be a police station, it may be within an office, or it may be in a courtroom, it's important that interpreters arrive in plenty of time and show your letter of instruction or your agency identification to reception staff. They will direct you to where you should go. Before beginning the assignment, you should try to speak to the person who has instructed you to ensure you both have a clear understanding of the requirement of the assignment and your role. You should both agree the most appropriate style or mode of interpreting for the assignment. Consecutive interpretation. Interpretation of a speaker's words into another language when the speaker has finished speaking. Whisper interpretation, where the interpreter sits close to the listener and whispers the interpretation without technical aids. The officers will like smell alcohol from her breath. Or more rarely, simultaneous interpretation. This is where the interpreter speaks from a booth and relays the interpretation using technology such as headphones. Um, my role here today is um, to facilitate communication. Um, everything that you say, I will sign to Joanne. Um, you should also discuss and agree a procedure for resolving difficulties and interventions. Um, you... It's of crucial importance that you have the confidence to interrupt proceedings in cases where, for example, parties are speaking too quickly or where there is no equivalent term in the community or foreign language for the English term being used. All interpreters must bear in mind that we are here to, for the justice to be done. So if you interpret for, interpret, uh, for, for the, the witness, for example, you need to make sure you convey all the, informations, all the information uh, uh, given by the, by the witness. And if you don't understand uh, 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 
a terminology, you need to indicate that to, to the court uh, officers uh, who will be more than willing to, to explain that uh, to you because they are aware that we're here to, for the justice to be uh, done and, and they will uh, help you. It's also very important, where possible, to meet and introduce yourself to the person for whom you are interpreting before commencing the assignment. This will allow you to confirm with them the language and or dialect and to advise how you will carry out your role. You should make sure that you have someone with you, for example, reception staff or the person who instructed you. At this stage, you must declare any difficulties you have, for example, with the dialect, any technical terms that you're unsure of or any previous involvement in the case. If you have previously been involved in the case, do not accept the assignment. If asked by the witness, it's important that you do not say whether the accused will be in the courtroom and where they will be seated. Yeah, I'm looking for an interpreter to speak uh, with me and my client, uh, or to interpret for my client. I wonder if you'd be able to do that. In criminal proceedings, interpreters instructed to provide services for one party are sometimes asked by other parties to facilitate other communications, for example, between a solicitor and the witness or accused at court. You should not accept such work without first obtaining permission from the clerk of court or the procurator fiscal. Where the assignment is at court and you're interpreting for a witness, speak to the person who instructed you to discuss if an oath or affirmation will be administered and ascertain if the person for whom you're interpreting requires any specific holy books for this purpose. Special requirements you need for taking the oath. Czy ma jakiekolwiek specjalne wymagania co do złożenia przysięgi? Czy mógłbym prosić Biblię żydowską? Could have a Jewish Bible. A Jewish Bible. Biblię żydowską. Tak. Yes, please. Okay. The services of interpreters may also be required in highly sensitive cases, such as cases involving children or cases involving sexual offences. For assignments such as these, interpreters must hold an enhanced level of disclosure. You should advise the person who instructed you of any sensitivities or additional difficulties that you become aware of, in particular with regard to the religion or culture of the person for whom you're interpreting. In some cases, children under 16 and adult vulnerable witnesses may be permitted to use special measures to allow them to give their evidence. And these may pose particular difficulties for both the linguist and sign language interpreter. There are a number of special measures. Using a screen. A screen can be used in the courtroom to obscure the witness's view of the accused or people in the public gallery. This screen might be a barrier or a curtain or a room divider. Different courts will use different types of screens. From the witness box, the witness can still see the judge, the procurator fiscal, lawyers, court staff and the jury, but not the accused. There will be a camera in the court so that the people on the other side of the screen, including the accused, can see the witness on the court televisions. Using a TV link. Witnesses may be able to give their evidence to the court using a live TV link from another room. The room is normally in the same building as the court. However, occasionally it may be in another building. The witness sits in front of a small camera, microphone and a TV screen. The TV is linked to the courtroom so that everyone inside the courtroom can see and hear the witness give their evidence. The courtroom also has TVs, cameras and microphones, but the witness is only able to see and hear the person who is asking the questions. The TVs and cameras are controlled by the judge. Using a supporter. Some witnesses may also be allowed to have a supporter to sit with them. They will sit near the witness in the courtroom or in the TV link room. The supporter does not speak, they support the witness just by being there. Prior statements. Prior statements may also be used by vulnerable witnesses. These prior statements may be written statements that the witness made when they first talked to the police or lawyer, or the video or tape recordings of these interviews. These may be read out or played to everyone in the courtroom. 
If the court decides to use a prior statement as main evidence, it's likely that the witness will be called into the court as normal, perhaps to listen to the statement being read or played. The witness may then be asked questions about what was in the statement. The use of special measures may pose particular problems for interpreters, and you should discuss workable solutions with the person who has asked you to provide the service before commencing the assignment. Uh, to begin with, the interpreters need certain basic interpreting skills, which are like the linguistic skills, communication skills, professional skills, and contextual knowledge. But when working with vulnerable witnesses, they need certain interpersonal skills and personality traits, which are important for uh, interpreting anyway, but which are more important when working with vulnerable witnesses. These include, like, uh, to start with good listening skills, uh, a friendly and approachable manner, a courteous and uh, uh, thoughtful approach, uh, attitude, and uh, being uh, aware of the cultural, dif uh, cultural uh, differences, and uh, being sensitive to the possibility of misunderstanding, understanding the body language. The interpreters and the court practitioners are always advised to speak slowly and clearly and use simple and plain language. While this is important in any kind of interpreting, this becomes extremely important when the vulnerable witnesses are involved. Uh, was there any issues for you from the, the interview point of view? Is there anything Upon completion of your assignment, interpreters, wherever possible, should try to spend a few minutes with the person who instructed you to review the assignment. Consider how you worked together and any pertinent practice issues which may have arisen during the assignment which may help you or the person who instructed you to improve practice. Thank you. Finally, where provided, you should promptly complete and return all relevant paperwork, including a monitoring form, on which you should record positive points or any difficulties that may have occurred. Interpreters working within Scotland's criminal justice system have a vital role in ensuring that our justice system upholds the rights of individuals and that Scotland's criminal justice system is accessible, effective and serves all communities fairly. It's therefore imperative that interpreting agencies assign the most appropriate interpreter to meet the requirements of the case. As well as having the necessary qualifications, relevant court experience and a valid certificate from Disclosure Scotland, it's important that interpreters are carefully matched to the person for whom they'll be providing the interpretation services, taking into account age, gender, religious and cultural considerations. In many communities, culture and religion is integral part of the language. For agencies, it is important that when interpreter is being uh, arranged, the cultural and religious um, issues are being considered. For instance, uh, a female um, witness would not feel comfortable if um, it was a male um, interpreter for her. Um, for instance, a witness who wears niqab will have many different sort of issues that needs to be considered. Agencies who are unable to meet the requirements must discuss the matter with the person for whom they are providing the service. It may be necessary to provide a written statement as to why an interpreter who does not meet requirements may be considered suitable for the assignment by the agency. It's also important that documents sent to you about assignments are forwarded on as quickly as possible to the interpreter to allow them to have as much information and knowledge about the case and the specific requirements of the assignment before undertaking the work. The provision of well-qualified, experienced and knowledgeable interpreters is essential to ensure a fair and effective service.